It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show this Tuesday morning. It's in fact Medical Tuesday talk time with Dr. Darren Green. We're talking about cochlear, uh, cochlear implants. This after the story of three and a half month, month old Neve who received Beautiful. a cochlear implant mm. that just uh, completely changed her life and her family's yeah, life too. Yeah, and enabled her to hear for the first time and yeah. it was such a heartwarming story. Now, Dr. Darren Green, we spoke about you know, the cochlear of the ear. So when it comes to a cochlear implant, what exactly is that and, and how does it work? Sure, so when we look at hearing, it's quite a complex process involving the design of the ear on the outside, for example, and this fold here, which is called the pinna, on the outer aspect of your ear, actually guides the vibrations in the air as they enter the, the outer ear mm. through the ear canal itself with those vibrations hitting the eardrum, which then vibrates mm -hmm. and creates uh, another set of, of reactions that move mm. through the middle ear towards the inner, inner ear to another small little window called the oval window. Mm -hmm. At that stage, you have then a, a, a what's, what's absolutely incredible, the conduction that goes across to the cochlea which looks uh, incredibly, incredibly complex. But the cochlea itself is a structure that is filled, it's a circular structure that's, that's filled with some fluid and it's also got hair cells in it and so on. And the cochlea is actually the structure responsible for that transduction of, of the, the vibratory signal hmm. into an electrical impulse. And that, what the electrical impulse needs to do is actually travel to a part of the brain that interprets the hearing or the, or the, the noise or the <laughs> stimulus. So it's quite a complex process. A cochlear implant is there to help us for people that have sensory, sensory neural deafness. In other words, the inner ear is damaged uh, or, or not functioning as it should. So the cochlea itself is, is dysfunctional or the, the nerve itself. So what we do is we bypass the structures of the inner ear that are faulty to ensure that signal is then changed into a, into a format that mm -hmm. can be interpreted by the human brain yeah. and that part of the brain can be stimulated early enough. Yeah. Now, of course, this is also very importantly your segment and your time to offer your opinions, your comments and questions. So do give us a call on 83 as we engage in this topic of hearing loss in children. So we've been talking about uh, cochlear implants. Now, is that the only way of treating hearing loss in children or what are some of the other yeah, commentaries? So, so, so depending on what type of hearing loss the child has, if a child has conductive hearing loss, which is caused by uh, uh, also quite a myriad of, of causes, ranging from the outer ear through to the inner ear, like chronic infections, yes. the eustachian tube that's blocked, for example. Mm -hmm. Your ENT, your ear, nose and throat specialist, will be involved mm -hmm. in treating a lot of those reversible causes. Mm -hmm. Grommets, for example, are put in early with children that have recurrent ear infections, where that eustachian tube might be blocked and you don't have good drainage or air movement through that, through that space. Okay. You have scar tissue that forms in the ear, and due to the chronic infections, you can develop mm -hmm. then permanent problems later on. So when it comes to conductive hearing locks, there are things like hearing aids that are useful. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, you have, even have bone uh, associated hearing aids that are implanted, for okay. example. But when it comes to the inner ear being, being affected yeah. in sensory neural deafness, the cochlear implant is the way to go. And the big crisis, why is this so important, is because our language development actually is at its best and most optimal at, up to the age of three and a half years old. So you've got a very uh, specific window that if you want a child to develop you know, that part of the brain, you need to stimulate that part of the brain, the hearing, the auditory part of the brain in that time period. So that's why it's important to pick it up early if your mm. child is suffering from a form of hearing loss. Well, we're going to be talking about those developmental effects of uh, undiagnosed hearing loss in children after the break. If you have any comments or questions for a doctor, you can give us a shout. Our lines are open 083 Right now, let's go over to Leanne.